Welcome to episode number 12. This episode is dedicated to Stella, who is Sophia's mother. I'm very happy to be bringing you stories about my mom today. Uh, They bring me great joy and they will be stories from my heart. My mother is on the other side of the veil, so she is no longer in a physical body. And these stories will be about her life and also uh, about afterlife. And so as we typically do on this podcast, we save our favorite story for last. And we're doing that this time. And I'll just tell you guys right now that this last story about Stella is about her ascension, like ascending like Jesus. And so it's a good one. You're going to want to stick around for it. (laughs) So I'll begin by telling everyone some background about my mother. My mother was very loving. She had three children. And um, at the age of seven, when I was seven years old, my mother suffered a brain aneurysm. So for those of you out there who don't know what that entails, it's a severe uh, damage to the brain. And basically the effects are very much like a stroke where the patient will lose their ability to walk, talk, recognize those they love, and have trouble processing information. So my mother was uh, normal uh, one day and then the next day she got sick and had this brain aneurysm. So When she returned home from the hospital, she was not my mother anymore. Yes, she had her physical body, but she didn't really recognize us as her children. Her brain and her processing weren't there. She could no longer walk, she could no longer talk, and she could no longer care for herself or process information the way a normal human brain does because of the brain damage. How long was she in that state you were just mentioning before her passing? For 14 years. Okay, so these stories for this podcast episode are stories from the last 20 years since her passing. Yes. Yes, and um, so there was a great joy in me to be ha- experiencing and having interactions with her when she was no longer in her physical body. She started to send me birds and butterflies as signs of her presence, and I mentioned that in episode eight, that I would also smell the scent of roses when I felt her presence. I was also able to receive a lot of confirming information from a psychic named Woo Woo Dude, and I talked about this in episode one, how I was really getting these birds and butterflies Uh, sent by my mother and also um, that I was talking to my mother in the car with me and it was so wonderful to have that confirmation that I wasn't just making all of this up. I actually have a tattoo on my arm of a butterfly that symbolizes her because it happens so often and it symbolizes her essence and our connection with each other in the afterlife. So when these birds and butterflies alerted me that she was around, I was able to psychically receive messages and talk to her. And that was a blessing in my life for a few reasons. Um, I was going through a divorce when this first started happening and the messages that came through really helped me process everything and know which direction to go and that I wasn't making a mistake by uh, choosing to end that marriage. Also, um, in New Zealand, Brandon and I went on a vacation, and she told me to follow Brandon to the ends of the earth. That was really helpful because we were about to jump off a cliff into some water, and I was pretty scared. (laughs) (laughs) So um, the other one is I was having some friction with my brother, and I saw her eyes in my brother's eyes, and the message that was received uh, was one of love, and it really shifted me and my awareness of... um, I needed to focus more on love with him and heal that relationship. And the last one is when we considered adopting our dog, Rossi. I saw her eyes in his eyes, and it was just so familiar to me. I took that as a sign that he was the right dog for us. So this next story happened on a day when I brought one of my new coworkers back to our place to show her around the property. Uh, She was a spiritual person into spirit animals, meditation, all that stuff. Uh, But I did not know that she had any sort of psychic abilities. 
and we had only been at the house for less than five minutes and we start walking around the property and she goes, Sophia, and, and let me say, she's never met Sophia before now. Mm-hmm. She just met Sophia within the last five minutes. And so we start walking around and she goes, Sophia, I don't know if your mom is dead or alive, but she she's here and she has a message for you. And she had a few messages. So the first thing she said is that I'm proud of you. And that's something she would say to us as kids, and I still get a little emotional about it even right now. It just felt like those were her words. The other things that she said um, was that she had saved this house for us, and this house that we purchased um, was a little too expensive. We weren't willing to pay that much money for it, and the lady, we actually walked away from it. Uh, for about a month and the lady reconsidered and wrote us an email and asked if we would like to renegotiate. And so um, my mom was holding on to this house for us. That was really cool. It's been the perfect house for us. The other messages, as we walked around our property, we came to the garage and I ride motorcycles and snowmobiles. And when Brandon's coworker came to the garage and saw those, the message that came through was that your mom really likes the path that you're on. And that just brought the biggest smile to my face because I've always wondered um, if, how, well, you know, what she thought about that because she was not a daredevil or, a, you know, very adventurous herself. So that made me really happy to know that. I will just jump in and say that we have tried to do some research on her history at different times. And we did learn that She was the president of the hiking Colorado 14ers in her young life. Yeah. So So she has a little bit of an adventurous side. That's true. She does. I didn't know her at that time. um, But yeah, that's true in her young days. (laughs) And the last message that was delivered was, I think you can do it. And the girl that was here, Brandon's coworker, was like, I have no idea what that means. Does that make any sense to you? And Yes, I had decided that I really wanted to work on self-mastery in this life and releasing my egoic self and being more of my higher self. So that brought me to tears. So I get the pleasure of telling the next story. So at this point, thanks to my coworker, we knew that Sophia's mom had something to do with this house. And this wasn't long after then. Uh, We were sitting at the kitchen table and there was some music playing and I knew all the lyrics to the whole song. Um, But at one particular point, I decided to look Sophia in the eyes and sing along to the lyrics since I knew it was coming (laughs) up. And so the lyrics were, you know, I think you got your mother's eyes. (laughs) And right when I said that, Boom! The house got struck by lightning. (laughs) It made the loudest crack and all of the power went off in the house. All the lights just (laughs) shut off and they were off for about a second and then they just popped right back on and everything came back on and we knew (laughs) what just happened. Yeah. Sophia's mom just struck our house with lightning. Yeah. (laughs) And so we started crying after that. We were just bawling our eyes out and... Yeah, uh, it was really incredible, just like the timing mm-hmm. of that with those lyrics. And so I apologize for my singing voice, but <laughs> yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> this next one is about when my mom came to me in a dream and she showed me that she was living a new life and that she was very happy and very busy. Um, She was very focused on her mission or her task in that life. And I still remember what she looked like physically, the clothes that she wore. She had short, black, frizzy hair, and she wore, like, tan clothes. They almost looked like clothes from, like, the 50s. So I do wonder about that, but they were, like, business clothes. But this dream really gave me a lot of peace of mind because she wanted me to know she was okay and living a new life. This next story takes place in California. We were staying at my brother's house and we were about to go on a motorcycle ride for a little bit over an hour to a dog beach. And right before we started the ride... I told Brandon, I feel my mother's presence. 
So I, I will vouch for her. She said that to me. We were already on the motorcycles and about to just take off. And she told me that. And so we take this ride a little over an hour to the dog beach. And we get there and we enter the dog beach. And the first thing we hear is a lady call her dog. Come here, Stella. <laughs> her dog's name was Stella. Yep. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, your mother is clearly on this journey with us. And at that point, actually, it wasn't a new phenomenon. It's uh, we've noticed that she travels with us. And so, yeah, she's been everywhere that we go on vacations around the globe. <laughs> and we've always said that's one of the perks to having your mom on the other mm-hmm. side because she gets to witness and and participate in all these trips that we're on and Mm -hmm. uh you know even though we're aware of it it's very cool to be aware of it you know every other time that it keeps happening Mm -hmm. all right so here's the ascension story that i mentioned at the beginning and sophia's gonna tell it to you i might jump in once in a while to highlight how mind-blowing some of this stuff is because it Certainly blew my mind and still does when I think about it. (laughs) So this was a few years ago around Easter time. And I had a dream where my mom came to me and she showed me that she had ascended. Let's start by defining ascension or at least how we define ascension. We see ascension as a release of identifying with separation and a complete union with the higher self or identifying with being at one with the creator. So many of you know Jesus is known for ascending and she was showing me that the same process happened to her. And can you describe what that looked like when you saw that? Yes, it was very beautiful. There was so much gold, um, striking gold and white and it was... uh, One of those experiences that was like all encompassing, like 360 degrees of these colors of gold and white. And how did you know those colors and that experience was indicative of her ascending? I just had this clear knowing um, deep within me that this is what was happening. It was just a, a sense that I had deep inside. After she showed me that she had ascended, she had a message for me. And these were her words. She said, Dad and I stole a large amount of money, and since my passing, I've been paying back my karmic debt for it, and I'm finally free of it. So I want to jump in here and say that it's not necessarily that she took 20 human years. Uh, Well, you know, she did take 20 human years to pay back this karmic debt. But what we've come to know and come to have learned is that souls can live in alternate realities where they may go through much different periods of time while Earth goes through its period of time. So for instance, she could have lived two lifetimes somewhere else during 20 Earth years. Mm -hmm, That's correct. And and we don't know how long it took her in her her perspective. but I just wanted to put that perspective shift out. That can that is something that happens when you start to get into lifetimes and other realms and planets and astral travel and, and things like that. Yeah, that's a great point. And so I was really shocked to receive this message. Um, I had no knowledge of anyone stealing a large amount of money in my family. And I was under the assumption that she meant her and my father stole a large amount of money because she said, dad and I stole a large amount of money. So I thought to myself, oh gosh, now I've got to go confront my father about this. And um, I had a trip scheduled uh, about a month or two later and I thought, well, perfect opportunity. I'll be alone with him, Um, you know, intimate setting we can talk intimately and if he needs to reveal anything, I'll create a safe environment so that he can do so. So I go home and finally find the perfect opportunity to ask my father if him and my mother stole a large amount of money. We had gone to a park that day and 
it was just him and me. There was no one else around. And, you know, the wind was blowing uh, pretty rough that day. I do remember that. But I finally mustered up the courage to ask him. And he was a bit shocked that I asked him. I said, so, Dad, I have to ask you. I had this dream. Did you and Mom steal a large amount of money? Um, That's what Mom had told me. And he said, no, honey, I did not steal any money from anyone. You know who stole money from me was your mother and her father. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So that's what she meant in the dream. Not her and your dad, but her and her dad. Which makes perfect sense from her perspective. Her and dad stole this money, meaning her father. And so my dad went into the long description of what happened, that it happened over many years. Um, My father owned a business and my mother was the secretary. And so she had access to the checkbook. Uh, She opened all the mail. And so my father didn't know what was going on, but she was writing blank checks and she was supporting her family, her mother and father, and possibly her sister too. My father had no knowledge of this all happening. Um, There was also multiple credit cards open that my father had no idea about. And she would open a credit card in just about every store. So department store credit cards, wherever a credit card was available, she would open a credit card. So those credit cards have about 25 to 30 percent interest and um, was racking up quite a large bill. And so... uh, Finally, my father caught wind of this because my oldest brother caught her writing blank checks and checks to her parents. And how much money did she steal? $30,000 is my father's approximation, and this was in the late 70s. So today, that would be about $236,000. Damn. Yeah. (laughs) My... My oldest brother and my middle brother, and then there's me as the youngest, both of my brothers and my father knew about this, and this was something that they hid from me. Um, They didn't want to smear my mother's name because I was seven years old when she got sick, and so they would keep a lot of things from me, but they wanted me to remember her well and not compromise my love by knowing this about her. So <clears throat> so let's just review how mind-blowing this is. Yes. Sophia's family, you know, the living family has known about this her whole life, never told her. Right. And Sophia's mom comes in a dream, admits to it, says she's worked through it, which is great news. That's really great news. Um, you know, if you have any loved ones who are stealing stuff and this and that, there's... It's not the end for them. Like, there's hope for them to work through all that. And that's another thing. They'll have to work through it and and come into union with their God self and and ascend, um, you know, eventually. But anyways, her mother came and told her this truthful information that she was able to verify Mm -hmm. through talking to her dad, which was amazing. And I kind of want to have you speak a little bit about how emotional that conversation was for you. Yeah, I was distraught, um, to say the least, because I was hearing this from my father, who is still very brokenhearted about it. It was very difficult for him, you know, uh, the amount of bills that he had to pay after she stole all this money, and the lying that she lied to him so very badly. And my father paid for her illness, uh, you know, for 14 years. So there is so much money. My father probably paid over a million dollars for her. That is not an exaggeration in this lifetime. And he's a hardworking man, blue blue collar. You know, my family are painters. So nothing flashy. Um, You got to go to work and work with your two hands uh, to make that money. So it was very difficult for my father to tell me this story and also very difficult for me to hear it. And my father actually stopped telling me this story because I was too emotional the first day and he didn't want to see me so brokenhearted about it all. So I called Brandon that night and I told him what happened and he suggested to me that I hold a state of being which is called Hara. 
Hara is uh, a state where you're in a pure intention and there is no emotion in that state. And that's something we had learned from Barbara Brennan's School of Healing that we were attending. And I thought, okay, great. I can, you know, approach the conversation tomorrow and stay in that Hara state of being. And hopefully my dad will continue to tell the story. And the next day I asked him to tell me the rest of the story. And he did. And I was able to hold myself in a coherent state where he felt comfortable enough telling me the rest of the story. And I'm very happy that he did. Very happy to know all the details and also so that he could get it off of his chest. Did you feel like it was healing for him to have this conversation with you? Oh, totally. Totally. Uh, Felt like a part of him was absolved. I never really understood the dynamic of their tension between each other. I knew that they had fights often, but this was a big source of a lot of that tension and fighting and really shone a lot of light on my father and his frustrations and why he was so frustrated with my mother. But also his ability to stick by her side through her illness and all that. So it really was like healing to get the biggest perspective that you'd ever had at this point in your life on the history of your parents and your family and all that. Yeah, I have so much love and so much compassion for what my dad walked through um, with my mom and really just uh, I admire him so much for his true character in his heart. Wow. All right, let's wrap this up with a soulful send-off. Yes. Uh, This is something my mom wanted me to know. She wanted me to know the truth and to clear my dad's name, so to speak. I really don't think anyone would have told me about it otherwise. So uh, it also really gives me hope for any wrongdoings that we do in this life, that there is resolution and peace to be found in the afterlife for things like that. And I want to acknowledge that it took me a long time to process my grief about everything that happened with my mother, with her sickness and her passing away. So if you're missing someone on the other side, just know that it is a process and it takes years and it takes time. Also, knowing that my mom is at peace on the other side really helps me feel at peace within myself and I'm able to really process things in a different way, knowing that she is okay where she is. And I noticed a big shift for you in your healing journey around all this and, and losing your mom and what she went through with the occurrence of the story. But uh, I do want to also say that you still have things come up now and then. And yeah, you know, definitely. The process continues, but this was a massive turning point. Yeah, definitely. Um, There's been a huge shift in me. Uh, To be able to tell this story without tears is something new uh, that has only happened over the last few years after doing a lot of deep work. So it really took me a long time to get where I'm at. And the last piece I'll add for myself is how inspired I am that uh, we have this proof about Sophia's mom ascending because, you know, a lot of the times, no matter how much work we do or meditation or reading or this and that, it seems like ascension is something that's saved for like the master masters Mm -hmm. way beyond like Mm -hmm. the level of consciousness that we're at. But, um, it's kind of like, okay, if she can do it, we can do it and we're all going to do it eventually in our own time, space, dimension, whatever it may be. But it's just very encouraging uh, to continue paying attention to this for ourselves and and doing the self-growth work that we've always been focused on and uh, thankful for Stella to come share her message and mm-hmm. and uh, thankful for all of her guidance and protection on our trips and yes. looking forward to more as we continue. Yes, I want to say I love you very much, Mom, and uh, I'm so happy that I get to tell your story, and I know you're always walking with me and very close to us. And thank you for always encouraging Sophia to be in this relationship and, and uh, 
clearly you've always thought high, highly of me and yes. I love you very much too. Thanks for not totally knocking out our power <laughs> with the electricity <laughs> and all that good stuff. But otherwise we want to thank our Patreon members for our weekly group healings and our financial supporters on Spotify mm-hmm. and all you guys, you keep us going and yes. couldn't do this without your help. So so thank you and much love to you all. Much love. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Every week we share our most recent divine guidance in an audio recording called Oracle Offerings. Sign up for only $5 a month at patreon.com slash aspenroots.